So today we are going to wrap up our discussion on React Native, uh, talking about the fundamental concepts in React Native. Now, before we get into today's lesson, again, I'd like to recap what React Native is. It is an open source mobile application framework created by Facebook and is used to develop applications for Android, Android TV, iOS, Mac OS, and others as well. It can also be used for web development, Windows, and UWP by enabling developers to use React frameworks along with the native platform capabilities. So the concepts we're going to talk about today are going to be the image and the button component. Now, just to give you a quick comparison between React, Android, iOS, and web. Uh, in React Native, we're going to use the image tag. On Android, you would use the image view. On iOS, you would use the UI image view. Web, we use the image tag, IMG. And that these tags are essentially used to display different types of images on the screen, on our app, on our web pages. If we want to use button for React Native, uh, it's pretty much a button on all of the different frameworks except for iOS. iOS requires you to use the UI button, which again, the button is used to display a clickable button. So let's get started with our hands-on demo. So like before, this is going to be a fairly interactive um, presentation. We're going to spend a lot of our time just typing through examples and looking and seeing how these components interact and work. Right now, my Android emulator is currently broken still on iOS because uh, I have the new ARM uh, M1 MacBooks, and there's still a slight bug in my development environment for Android. So for now, we're just going to use an iPad and an iPhone 12 uh, emulator to see how deploying our applications, or as we code our applications, we can see real-time updates on different devices. So the first element we're going to talk about today is the image. And in React, it is a uh, essentially the image tag, IMG, capital image, is a React component for displaying different types of images, including network images, static references, temporary local images, and images from the local disk, such as the camera roll. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you how to fetch and display an image from your local storage, as well as from one from your network. So let's start with our view. Everything that was here was pre-generated by uh, Expo. So we start with our view. And then we need to add some images to our view. So we will start with the image option. Image requires a source. We need to tell it where to find the image. And inside of our source, if we're looking for an image locally, we use require. And to look for an image that is on your device or on your machine while you're testing, you come over here and you find your path. So we have our assets folder here. And inside of assets, we have some static images. So to access that, we start with the root path dot assets and let's do have icons now 
it failed because it did not import our image. So we need to make sure that we import our image tag. And there's our image. Now, let's add some styles. Uh, uh, actually, before we add styles, let's go get an image off the network. So let's go out to the web. Browser. Let's use Microsoft Edge. And let's go to developer.com and let's take our banner image up here. So we will copy our link to our image. So as you can see in HTML, the image tag uses the SRC or source attribute to look up the image on the web. And we're just essentially doing something similar in React Native. So here we will do image source equals again. So well, this time, we don't need to use uh, require. This time, we're actually going to use the UI or URI attribute. And the URI attribute just takes a text string of your image. Okay, get closed. Save that. Nothing is displayed. So here is a slight tip. If you're pulling images locally, you don't need to set any attributes for displaying the image. It's going to take the actual properties of the image. If you import the image from the web, uh, from a web resource, you have to actually define the source to find this. So we're gonna do this a couple of different ways. So let's copy this again, and just create a second one. And let's create some styles and apply it to each of these three images. So again, I want to note that for network and data images, you need to manually specify the dimensions of your image. And to do that, we just come down to our style sheet section here, and we're going to add some additional style attributes. So first, let's create one for called image. And this, we're just going to set the default of our image to be width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. Okay. Set this guy up to be 50. We apply the style. So if I take the image and I come up here to our first one and we do style equals. Image, oops, style, uh, image. There we go. Now let's add a second attribute for our first developer image that we're going to import. And this one we're going to call small image. Image, we're going to do 66 and 58. And then small image is actually going to be 50 50. All right. Now let's create a, another one for large image. And this one, we're going to set the width to be full screen, so 100%. And we'll set the height to be 200. And we'll also create one additional style property called Chrissy Image.
This one is going to use the resize mode of stretch. All right, so we applied image to our first image. We do small image, a little bit smaller. We did large image. Got bigger. Okay, so let's go back to just image like that. The black one. Yeah, it's padding here so that it's not at the top. Now, the reason I'm adding top padding here is because I am not using the uh, container safe uh, view. Uh, I'm using this view. This view is compatible with all devices, whereas if we use the uh, iOS view, it comes down from the header of our iOS app, so we miss out on the notch at the time. But that may break or it gets ignored when we deal with Android devices. All right, so next, let's add some imaging to our developer, our first one. So we'll copy our style here. And let's also add style to our third one here. So this first one, we're going to do large image. And for the moment, we'll leave this guy blank. So if we see save, you see we now have our image. Looks pretty good on the iPad. Looks pretty crappy on the iOS device. And if you notice, we still don't have our third image because we did not specify the style for it yet. And so the last one we want is gonna be stretchy image. And a little bit better. Uh, it looks a little distorted on the iOS, but at least now we can see everything in our image. So you can use the require to pull the image from the local device, or you can use the attribute URI to pull from a URL. All right, the second one we're gonna look at today, actually, before I move on, does anyone have any questions on using images? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, all right, so the next example we're gonna look at is gonna use the image background. Now, this is a common feature request from developers familiar with web in uh, using images on the web. Now, to handle this use case, you can use the image background button. Tag uh, component, which has the same properties as image and whatever child you add to it will appear on top of it as a top layer. Now, you might not want to use the image background in some cases since the implementation is basic. So typically you're gonna use image for most of your image displaying through your mobile applications, your web. Image background is a good uh, little uh, tag to use when you're dealing with like splash screens or loading screens where you want to have an image behind but have some text or something displayed in front of it so for this one let's take our url here let's take our source and actually turn this into a constant so we'll come up here and we'll create a constant called develop image okay. this way I don't have to copy and paste the URL all over the place Let's clean up our view so we'll get rid of our previous example save that we have our view so far so good also going to reset our style sheet here. All right, so inside of our view, 
let's, uh, let's go ahead and add our image background. So if we do image background, now we need to make sure that it's added in our imports. It is. We have image background. And just like image, it has source. And because we defined our URI here as a constant, we can just reference developer image. And now we need to add some style. And close our tag. Yep, not happy because we don't have an image attribute yet. So let's go add one. So image. Okay, so here we're going to use flex one. We're going to use resize mode of cover. And we're going to set our justify context to be center. Image background is not a single close tag. It is a wrapper tag, so we have to actually close our tag. And let's add something inside of here so we can actually see that. Let's actually add a text. And just add some simple text. And yeah, let's add some style to our text. And let's add a text attribute to our style, set our text color, let's go ahead and set it to white, let's paint our font size to 42, font weight, let's make it bold, let's align it to be center, And let's set its background color be semi transparent. Image background. There we go. All right. So here's our image using background image, and here's our text inside of our image.